my grandfather. <clears throat> you wish to know all about my grandfather. Well, he's nearly 93 years old, yet he still thinks as swiftly as ever. He dresses himself in an ancient black frock coat, usually minus several buttons. A long flowing beard clings to his chin, giving those who observe him a brown feeling of the utmost respect. When he speaks, his voice is just a bit cracked and quivers peripheral. Twice a day he plays skillfully and with less upon a small organ. Except in the winter, when the snow or ice prevents, he slowly takes a short walk in the open air each day. We often have urged him to walk more or snow class. He always answers, banana oil. Grandfather likes to be modern in his language. Do you find there are advantages or benefits you experience as a result of your accent? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> no, I think there are. You know, because it's a bit of an icebreaker. Um, you know, as soon as you start talking. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I guess that sounds really good. It's a bit of an icebreaker. So, I don't know, it's always like an easy thing just to start talking about. Oh, are you from England? Oh, I don't know. You know. <laughs> Do you think that people like make judgments prior to actually knowing you because of your accent? Like, I don't know what some British stereotypes or like English stereotypes are, but do you think people sometimes apply them to you? Uh, I don't think so. No, I think it's alright. I think the only stereotype that there, that there could be is, oh, yeah, he's from England. Oh, he's a bit sort of. Uh, I don't know, posh, or he's a bit kind of fancy, you know. Uh, but to be honest, as soon as I started speaking for about 30 seconds, you quickly realise that I'm not in any way fancy. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I think that, I think he's right, to be honest. Oh, since you do speak English just with an accent, do you think it's a little bit easier to fit in as if you had like a Russian accent or um, like you spoke a whole other language? Yeah, it's a lot easier. I mean, essentially, English, you know, if you, speak, if you learn it as the first language, then all you are doing to any of the, when you're in any of the countries that speak it as the first language, you're just a different accent, you're just a different dialect, mm -hmm. essentially. I mean, you know, especially when countries aren't that far apart in their history. You know, like, say, if you come from Australia or South Africa or England, you know, you, you're going to gonna understand each other. Like, you're not going to feel too out of place. You know what I mean? It's more of an accent than a, than a different language. So people always think that, uh, well, they always ask you, like, is it hard for people to understand you, but is it hard for you un to understand us sometimes or just anyone else because of the fact that you're used to a certain dialect? Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit sort of tricky. Sometimes you have to think. Um, it's usually fine when I'm one-on-one -on -one like this, but if I'm in a bar and I'm trying to, like, listen to somebody talking and there's a bit of background noise, I find it quite, yeah, sometimes a little bit tricky to understand every single word, you know, and you sort of develop a habit of, like, you know, like, you just don't really get much one out of every ten words, but you just, you, you, you're on the track of the whole conversation, so you're alright. Um, and then, you know, funnily enough, when I was a kid, I do remember starting to watch more American TV and around that time I was like really sort of struggling to understand the accent, you know, because we've watched TV for like obviously since when I was a kid, you know, by the time I got to the States, I guess I was pretty used to the accent, but I held to our Do you prefer any accents in the US, like the Midwestern or Southern, or are there any you don't like? 
So do you try to, um, like, instead of trying to fit in with your accent, do you actually, like, do you mind, like, standing out so people, like, notice your accent, or do you try to act a little bit more American? Mm, probably act a little bit more American. Probably, like, say, <clears throat> I don't know, like, especially, you know, what I said about dropping teeth and saying things a little bit more fluidly, you know, I guess the British, see that, that's a little trick, well I just did British there, I just did British, and that, yeah. So it's just a little thing, like, speak a bit more fluidly, drop a few T's, but then uh, what I've, I think I've started noticing is saying, like, phrases, or, you know, things like Americans usually say, you know, like, something like, you know, you just say that word a lot. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is a problem. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, so just things like that, I guess, I've started doing, because it's just easy, you know, and then find also when I sort of uh, go to a shop or a store or a restaurant and sort of talk to a stranger, um, it's just easier to say it in a slightly more American way, you know, just recognize, your, recognize what you're trying to ask for a bit more easily, you know. Are you against losing your accent and becoming more Americanized, or do you not mind if that happens? I I do want to keep it, but to be honest, the sort of longer I've lived here, the more I'm dropping T's. And you know, like I said, I was oh, I'm going to go to the city, and I'm like, what? Well, no, I used to say city and stuff like that. You know, so you just find that you drop a few things. Um, yeah, I don't know, I do want to keep it though. I do want to sort of limit that. I don't mind sort of softening the accent a little bit, but I kind of want to keep it. You know, because it's kind of like who I was for 28 years. So, yeah, mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to sort of lose who you are, I guess. I just have one more question and then we're done. Yeah. So the last question is, do you think accents and dialects are issues that society needs to deal with better? So there's obviously a gap um, if people have accents and dialects that you can't understand, and that can be a problem. And I guess the question is just asking if you think that we should work harder to try and uh, make a bridge for that gap so that we could all understand each other. Uh, I mean, it depends on the severity of the accent. So, I mean, predominantly, my experience, you know, in a country such as the U.S., where you have a lot of sort of people from all different sort of places, is it's not actually that big an issue, really. I don't, I don't find it like a bridge. Or maybe that's because I'm, I'm an immigrant. I guess I've got a slightly different perspective. So I, you know, if I talk to loads of different people, loads of different accents, I don't find it an issue. Whereas, I guess if I was in England, I'd never left, so I've never lived abroad, and a lot of people, you know, I, I, I sort of, if I encountered people in England that had accents, I guess I would find that more of an issue than I do right now. So, yeah, I guess as a whole, if you look at society, I think it is a little bit of a bridge. So maybe just ex because maybe just exposure probably, is the is what we need, more exposure, because you were basically saying... That you, since you were exposed to it, it's now like a little bit easier for you? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean, yeah. Okay.